big data, it's a big topic. And so we're going to break it down and we're going to look at it specifically from a managerial perspective. This is the first of two videos and the first video will look at volume, velocity, and variety. So there's different ways of characterizing, characterizing big data, but one of the most more popular is the five V's perspective. Originally, there were just three V's. And so in this first of two videos, we're going to look at the first three V's of big data, which is volume, velocity, and variety. First, volume. So when we think about the big, the big data, the primary thing we think about is lots and lots of data. And I'm sure you've heard the statistics. Here are some examples here uh, that uh, by 2020, last year, there's an estimate of about uh, 40 zettabytes, that's 43 trillion gigabytes of data uh, being created. Um, estimate of 2.5 quintillion bytes of data created each day. So huge amounts of data with the internet age in which we live today. Now, from a, a managerial perspective, the main concern here is that when there's lots and lots of data, traditional database technologies were not really made for that. They were made for structured data of maybe a few gigabytes in size is a very large database, but when you have huge amounts of data, traditional databases start to choke. And this is a, a big organizational challenge. However, for managers, really managers don't need to get so much into the technical details, but the main response is that you should hire database administrators that specialize in big data management. And, and uh, this is worth saying because you might have some uh, traditional database uh, uh, administrators. And when I say traditional, I don't mean it in a negative way. Even in the age of big data, at least 90% of any organization, even an organization that uses big data, at least 90% of their databases will remain traditional databases. These are robust. They are very generally applicable. So you have some very good administrators who still use those, but they might tell you that uh, we can't handle this big data. Well, that's because they do. it needs a different skill set. So you just need to not replace traditional ones, but hire specialized database administrators who know big data technologies. And that will really take care of the technical aspects. One thing to note, though, that's important for managers to note is that big data uh, technologies, even when you have huge data sets, are not appropriate for every kind of application. And the main one of the main applications where they are not appropriate is for uh, where you have any need for real time high accuracy. That is to the very millisecond, every transaction must be accurate. Uh, for example, in financial transactions, you can't have someone uh, withdrawing money from their accounts and, and then two seconds later it shows up because in that two second gap, someone could double withdraw. So when you really need to make sure that there's no error for even a second, big data technologies do not work. You need to go with slower uh, traditional technologies, which is only slow for huge amounts of data. But there, uh, because big data technology sacrifice fine tune to the second accuracy for much higher speed for huge amounts of data. So that's just something to be aware of. That um, one application where you would not want to use big data technologies, even if you have huge amounts of data. The second B of big data is velocity. And the idea behind velocity is the fact that you have a constant influx of new data. Uh, with social media, people are constantly posting, there's new data all the time. If you have sensor data from the internet of things, or from a machine floor, or, or from self-driving cars, there's a constant flow of data that's, uh, that's coming in. And this a very rapid influx of data is another, uh, aspect that makes big data big. 
the main managerial challenge here is that when you model your data, that is when you analyze the data that you currently have, and you usually do this for predictive analytics, you analyze the past to predict the future, you are able to uh, understand your data better and prepare for the future. However, in the context of big data velocity, the problem is that past data does not necessarily reflect the future because when you analyze the past to anticipate the future, with big data velocity, it's not only that there's new data, but the trends change, uh, such as uh, customer interests might change all of a sudden. Uh, maybe, uh, well, in this age of COVID-19, uh, we see how a disease in one part of the world spread like wildfire throughout the whole world, and uh, there's chain reactions that are going on very rapidly. So the main response for managers is that when you model your data, when you analyze your old data to predict the future, you have to update it and you have to update it constantly. You can't assume things will change, what will remain the same. You will frequently, at least uh, every few months or even monthly, depending on the application, update your models to reflect the most recent information you have. And there's even advanced models that dynamically immediately update um, but uh, even if you do it more manually, you just need to do that more frequently. So now we come to the third V of big data, variety. And this is in contrast to traditional databases, again, where you're usually stru uh, storing structured data that consists of a lot of numbers, uh, mainly, and also short text categories. And what I mean by that is, for instance, uh, you have uh, the names of people or names of places, cities, maybe regions, north, south, east, west, uh, just short text labels. Uh, and that's the bulk of the data in traditional databases. But uh, in the big data age, you have many new types of data, a lot of which is unstructured, meaning that it doesn't come in convenient tabular format. You have texts uh, such as emails, social media posts, uh, entire documents that you want to store and analyze. You have images, uh, which uh, are not something that are analyzed easily by traditional databases. You have audio, you have video, geographic coordinates. You have lots of different kinds of data, which traditional databases were not really designed for, and it becomes quite a challenge uh, to, treat, to handle all these different kinds of data. The primary tool for uh, handling a big data variety is text mining. And this handles text data, uh, not just small categories, but it tries to, well, it doesn't go as far as understanding the text. We're not quite there yet, but it analyzes it to produce uh, summary results that are, uh, that are more understandable and actionable. So text data, uh, such as documents, tweets, social media posts, and pre, and this uh, text mining pre-processes the text data and converts it into numbers and categories that can then be analyzed using uh, more standard data mining techniques. And, and that's a very robust tool. Now, when I talk about text mining, this is only the first kind of variety, but text mining is quite powerful in handling big data variety. Because when you consider audio, uh, now, Audio, it might be sounds like music and so on, but most audio that we listen to is human voice. And human voice can be uh, converted into text. There's lots of uh, tools, even free tools that do a very good job of that. And once the audio, uh, the voice is converted to text, then you can apply text mining techniques to it. But then even video. Uh, video has two main elements. There is there are moving pictures, so lots of images that are shown 30 times per second or 60 times per second, uh, usually. Uh, but another major aspect of video is an audio track. And when you have humans in the video, uh, the audio track uh, and with people talking is often a major or very often the primary part of the video. And so if you extract the audio from the video, and then you convert it to text, then suddenly you're able to analyze a very significant portion of, of the video as well using text mining techniques. 
Now, when you're looking at the images, like still images and also moving images and video, well, text mining can't handle that directly, but there are some special techniques for handling, for recognizing what are in images, especially now with deep learning, uh, it's uh, quite standard now to be able to recognize objects and images and in videos. So uh, there are a lot of techniques that can handle that kind of variety. Then there's other special uh, kinds of data that might need its own special techniques, such as geographic coordinates that can uh, map the coordinates into uh, map coordinates, uh, either as an image or in some other computer representation of a geographic space. So there are special techniques to handle different kinds of data that your organization might be interested in. And the main implication for managers here is you need to keep up somewhat. I mean, you're not going to be an expert in all these technologies. No one is an expert in all of them. But as a manager, you need to keep track of cutting edge technologies. Uh, for example, know what's what is the current state of image recognition? Like maybe images today can recognize cats and dogs, uh, but maybe uh, in uh, five years, you'll be able to tell specific breeds and even estimate the age and the gender of the animal just by uh, looking at the image. So when you keep up and know what is currently possible, then suddenly your business applications become greatly multiplied relative to what uh, you could do before. So in the next video, we're going to continue uh, with the other three Vs.